These days, every single person is known with the word computer. We can find computers at everywhere around us. In fact, modern world will be incomplete without computers and their applications. It is almost impossible to even imagine the modern facilities without the use of computers. To further understand its importance, today we will discuss of how computers impact everyday life. For the objectives of this lesson, first, we will explain the impact of computers on daily life. Second, to know the uses of computers in various fields. And third, to encourage an understanding of the implications of computers in the modern world. So how computers impact everyday life? The advent of technologies, specifically the development of information and communications technology, has changed the lives of the people. So before this happened, life was burdensome and everyday chores and activities consumed too much of our time. Through this, the society has been dramatically changed with the evolution of technology. Great and immense opportunities are being provided by technologies which play an important role in human life. The access of education, medicine, industry, and transportation has been simplified due to modern-day technology. Due to the convenience and efficiency provided by technology, our lives have improved significantly. So one of today's great examples for modern-day technology is the computers, which permit everyday life as they are used in various fields like in schools, malls, hospitals, and among others. To know more about computers, let us delve more on the following areas of how computers have made such a big impact. First one is the education. Today, most elementary and secondary schools and higher education institutions have placed computers in libraries, computer laboratories, and even in other classrooms. ICT in general made things convenient for students and efficient for teachers, researchers, and school administrators. Computers placed in schools serves as a great help to the students and teachers because with the use of it, they can easily access and collect data and grasp information needed from their lessons. Schools should provide their students the opportunity to access the internet and the World Wide Web. It will help them to develop the knowledge about the current technology. The use of computers is quite necessary because it helps people to maintain the real-world opportunities. Also, with the use of computers, teachers can do research and enhance their teaching materials. So teachers can join online forums and conferences and gain new ideas and learn from the latest research and trends. Also, the more teachers know about computers, the more they can teach and give instructions to the students in a proper way and provide sources for the students' reading materials. The next one will be the students. So the students use computers with internet access as one of their reference tools. They can communicate and collaborate with their peers while working in their homes. Computers have supplied infinite resources for learning and made education more flexible and easy to access. Students can now gain knowledge and information not only from classroom, assignments, and libraries, but also from available online resources. Video tutorials, free or paid ebooks, and several forums also, also contribute in the resources that are needed by the students. Aside from that, computers also influence students' personal interaction with their classmates and mentors. As assignments and reports can be done online, there's no need to do the traditional way of presentation. Computers ensure the accuracy of teaching text materials as it has a word processing software that provides spelling and grammar checking tool. Third one is the school administrators. So the school administrators uses computers for administrative work to ensure that the entire operation of the school runs proficiently. So with the use of computers, an access to all documents is made easy and always available with the use of a so-called server. 
Here in our school, we use the Optimate system which is handled by the school administrators as a guide for the students to view our perspectives, grades, and class schedule. Aside from that, school administrators manage budgets, handle logistics, and act as a point of reference for everyone in the school that is why when a student asks them regarding about their school accounts and other questions about the school, they use computers to search for student details and provide them with answers. Next, e-learning or electronic learning. It is the newest teaching methodology in which students and teachers can communicate and collaborate with each other through online discussions of lessons, activities, and examinations. So e-learning, or also referred to as online learning or electronic learning, is the acquisition of knowledge which takes place through electronic technologies and media. In simple language, e-learning is defined as learning that is enabled electronically. Typically, e-learning is conducted on the internet where students can access their learning material online at any place and any time. E-learning most often takes place in the form of online courses, online degrees, or online programs. Such examples are Blackboard, Edmodo, Moodle, and the one that is used here in our school is a Quipper which is used in the SHS department and Google Classroom. Banking The computer has made all banking transactions around the world easier and more secure. It manipulates the entire banking system as it includes 24-hour electronic banking services. Using computers to do banking activities saves up more time because it is convenient for the customers, especially for those who are busy. It has great speed and efficiency, and its services are available 24 hours 7. With just a few clicks, you can already have a fast transaction speed. Also, it secures your account with no worries. Some of its services are the automated teller machines or the ATMs, it is an electronic banking outlet that allows customers to complete basic transactions without the aid of a branch representative or teller. Anyone with a credit card or debit card can access cash at most ATMs. Next one is the check deposit. It is when you deposit a check into your account, your bank will send an image of the check to the payer's bank. The purpose is to collect the check amount for crediting into your account. This process is called check clearing. So with the use of computers, collecting checks for crediting into customer's account is much easier and faster. The next one is the electronic fund transfer. It is a system of transferring money from one bank account directly to the another without any paper money changing hands. Examples of common electronic fund transfer transactions include the following the ATMs, the direct deposit payroll systems, and the direct payments between buyer and seller businesses. Direct deposit. It is a payment option where your funds are electronically transferred to your checking or savings account. This can help the payee receive payment faster and avoid dealing with physical checks. In many cases, direct deposits means your payroll checks are automatically deposited into your bank account. Pay by phone system. It is a mobile payments which encompass mobile wallets and mobile money transfers, which are regulated transactions that take place through your mobile device. So that instead of paying for the stop with cash, checks, or physical credit cards, Mobile payment technology allows you to do so digitally. And the last one is the personal computer banking or internet banking. So it is a method of banking in which transactions are conducted electronically via the internet. Workforce industry. Workers, researchers, and administrators benefit from ICT. Computers are used to expedite production planning, and control systems to support chain management and to facilitate product design in the industrial sector. 
Machines that are full computer operated are now used to produce work labor and products in the companies. Some of the large industrial companies that implement ICT include Toyota Philippines, Honda Philippines, and San Miguel Corporation. So in particular, using computer-operated machines had significant implications in the workplace. Companies had to incorporate this new technology into their fold to stay competitive. Through this, the work is produced much faster than the laborers. Computers have since then largely contributed to the evolution of the workplace, making it more streamlined and connected. To add, researchers use computers to gather and analyze data to manage the entire operations of the plant or factory to detect or anticipate explicit errors or deficiencies that transpire in the process. However, the use of ICT can be perceived as a threat to assembly line and factory workers as robots or machines taking, taking over their jobs. Looking at the workforce as a whole, one of their contentious issues surrounding the effects of computers on employment is that it creates and destroys jobs at different ends of the economy. Combined with information technology tools, computers allow for greater flexibility in working arrangements. As a result, computers tend to create high-paying, high-skill technical jobs which destroys low-paying and low-skill jobs. With that being said, it becomes a risk to the workers with their jobs and gives them fewer opportunities for interactions with peers and co-workers and also to provide money for their family. Electronic Commerce Electronic commerce or simply e-commerce has boost economy. With computers, internet, and shared software as the main tools needed, buying and selling activities are made easier, more efficient, and faster. Customers, sellers, and suppliers all benefit from the capabilities of ICT. Some of the known e-commerce markets are Zalora, Lazada, Shopee, MetroDeal, TakaTak, OLX.ph, Airbnb, and many others. Customers or clients use computers to communicate with sellers. This method can save time and cost as consumers do not have to go physically to any outlets or department stores. Suppliers, on the other hand, use computers in keeping track of their transactions which include the monitoring of inventory. The last one, hospitals. The use of computers in hospitals offers many benefits to both doctors and patients. Hospitals are creating patients' databases of health records, treatment records, and medical records. Also, with the help of ICT, doctors use computers and various medical applications not only for research advancement, but also for faster diagnosis of patients' illness. So computer techniques have tremendous applications in medical field, where it has the largest amount of social impact and is playing an important role in the, in the running of large hospitals. With this, computer facilities are now regarded as integral to much diagnostic equipment. Major uses of computers in medicine include hospital information system, data analysis in medicine, medical imaging laboratory computing, computer-assisted medical decision-making, care for critically ill patients, and computer-assisted therapy, and so on. Their use has increased efficiency and reduced human errors, apart from providing regular updated information and streamlining medical education and healthcare Computers do play an indispensable role in administration and management via regular and timely updates and through availability of its World Wide Web. The uses of computers may be seen through Computing and Monitoring Technologies Blood Test A scientific examination of a sample of blood, typically for the diagnosis of illness or for the detection and measurement of drugs or other substances. Brain testing. It assesses the brain's mental activity and performance. Using the computerized EEG devices, 
It is checked whether the brain works properly. Memory and tension tests are used to detect functional disorders. Ultrasound. It is a medical test that uses high-frequency sound waves to capture live images from the inside of your body. It is also known as sonography. The technology is similar to the use by sonar and radar, which help the military detect planes and ships. Echocardiography. It is a test that uses sound waves to produce live images of your heart. The image is called an echocardiogram. This test allows your doctor to monitor how your heart and its valves are functioning. The images can help them to get information about blood clots in the heart chambers. Next, complete blood count or CBC. It is a blood test used to evaluate your overall health and detect a wide range of disorders including anemia, infection, and leukemia. Mammography, or also called mastography. It is a process of using low-energy x-rays to examine the human breast for diagnosis and screening. The goal of mammography is the early detection of breast cancer, typically through detection of characteristic masses or microcalifications. Bone density study. It is the only test that can diagnose osteoporosis before a broken bone occurs. This test helps to estimate the density of your bones and your chance of breaking a bone. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. Uses a large magnet and radio waves to look at organs and structures in your body. Healthcare professionals uses MRI scans to diagnose a variety of conditions from torn ligaments to tumors. And lastly, X-rays. X-rays are a type of radiation called electromagnetic waves. X-ray imaging creates pictures of the inside of your body. The images show the parts of your body in different shades of black and white. This is because different tissues absorb different amounts of radiation. So with the development of databases and other applications, ICTs prevent medical errors in particular and improve the efficiency of the health in general. The use of internet in our daily life is very important. We use the internet for almost everything we do. In our online class, sharing a moment with a friend by sending photo, ordering pizza, or in buying something from online shops. The internet is fully integrated into our day-to-day -day lives in all areas, and this creates an impact on the way we interact with others. So the objectives for this lesson is that to be able to deepen our knowledge about the internet, to recognize the origin of the internet, and to discover different jobs the internet can do. The internet is defined as a worldwide network connecting to a million of computers via dedicated routers and servers. When computers are connected to the internet, end users could start sending and receiving different types of information. These types of information can be sent and received via electronic mails, text or video chats, conferencing, and computer programs among others. Now, most telephone companies all over the world also function as internet service providers. In the Philippines, the PLDT, formerly known as the Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, is the largest network. Smart Communications and Digital Mobile Philippines, commercially known as Sun Cellular, are collaborating with PLDT, while Globe Telecom has acquired Bayan Telecommunications, formerly known as or commonly known as Bayantel or Bayan. These telecommunications companies use high-speed fiber optic cables to transmit data, but no one actually owns the internet. Large internet service providers own infrastructure through which internet is delivered. Today, according to the 2018 Global Digital Suite of Reports from We Are Social and Hootsuite, there are more than 4 billion people connecting to the internet for various reasons, such as for communications, shopping, gaming, and sharing files and data. 
the internet then and now. Even though today's internet bears little resemblance to its forebear of almost 50 years ago, it still functions in basically the same way. The internet has evolved into something different from the special purpose restricted use network its planners originally envisioned it to be. The internet started from the Advanced Research Projects Agency's Wide Area Network, which is called the ARPANET. This was established by the U.S. Department of Defense in the 1960s so that the military's research unit could collaborate or partner, partner with business and government laboratories. ARPANET protected the flow of information between military installations by creating a network of geographically separated computers that could exchange information via a newly developed protocol rule for how computers interact called NCP or Network Control Protocol. Afterwards, other universities and U.S. institutions were connected to ARPANET that resulted in the growth of ARPANET different from everyone's expectations. ARPANET then attained the name of Internet. The advancement of hypertext-based technology known as World Wide Web, WWW, or just simply as the web, has provided the channels for displaying text, graphics, animations, and many more. Its other features of enabling easy search and offering navigation tools prompted the Internet's unpredictable worldwide growth. The Internet 2 Environment Future Empowerment Internet 2 is a not-for-profit networking consortium founded in 1996 by 34 university research institutions in the U.S. It provides a collaborative environment where U.S. research and education organizations work together and develop advanced technologies and innovative solutions such as telemedicine, digital libraries, and virtual laboratories to assist education, research, and community development. Internet2 managed the Internet2 network, a next-generation optical and internet protocol network that is capable of delivering enhanced network services and is better, faster, and more efficient than the typical internet or broadband connections. Internet2 maintains a secure network testing and research environment. It began operating the Internet 2 DCN, our Dynamic Circuit Network, an advanced technology that allows user-based allocation of data circuits over the fiber optic network. The Philippines, via the PRIGENET, or the Philippine Research Education and Government Information Network, is among the international peers reachable via Trans-Eurasia Information Network, one of the Internet 2's caring relationships. Just in August 2017, a national training course on nuclear neurology was held in which nationwide webcasts among hospitals was made possible through the high-speed connectivity provided by Prigenet and the video conference server hosted locally at the Department of Science and Technology Advanced Science and Technology Institute. By supporting telemedicine or telehealth in the country, this information infrastructure therefore enables Philippines hospitals to keep abreast of new medical diagnostics and world-class treatment options without having to travel abroad. Internet today is still growing. Today, the internet connects thousands of networks and billions of users around the world. The number of internet users as of January 2018 is 4.021 billion, which means that more than half of the world's population is now online as revealed by We Are Social and Hootsuite in the 2018 Global Digital Suite of Reports. Despite this huge number, the internet has no central ownership. It means that no single person or group controls the network. Although there are several organizations such as the Internet Society and the World Wide Web Consortium that propose standards for Internet-related technologies and guidelines for the appropriate use. These organizations almost universally support the Internet's openness and lack of centralized control.
As a result, the internet is open to anyone who can access it. If one can use the computer, and if the computer is connected to the internet, he or she is free not only to use the resources posted by others, but also to create resources of his or her own. That is, the internet user can publish documents on the World Wide Web, exchange email messages with other users, and perform many other tasks. Jobs the Internet Can Do Internet users may wonder about the jobs that the Internet can do. However, there is only one simple job that the Internet does, and it is to move, transfer, or assign a computerized information from one place to another. This information can be in the form of text documents, images, audio, video, and software programs, among others. All this information is known as data. The internet can handle different kinds of information and assist people to perform various jobs, from the simple task of handling of email, searching on websites, and sending chat messages to the more sophisticated function of creating websites and programming possible through various software programs. Even though internet is a great effect in our lives, when using it, we should always strive to be safe. Protect your identity, security, and privacy. That would be all. Thank you for listening.